Jock. Jock McGregor. Here. Oh, it's hard enough to singe the devil's tail. Will you come have a beer with me? Oh, no. No, thank you, Dougal McDougal. Well, I'll pay. Now, I'll take a rain check. The devil you will. Turning down a free beer. Oh, I can't believe you're at it again tonight. The truth now, McGregor. Which is it you're meeting, a blonde or a redhead? Uh... Now, what are the three divisions of small business? Wilson. <clears throat> um, corporations and uh, partnerships and... McGregor. Uh, proprietorship, uh, that's a man and his lonesome. A partnership uh, might as well be married. <laughs> McGregor, do not be poetic, be precise. Uh, proprietorship is single ownership, partnership is dual, corporation is multiple ownership, three or more. Precisely. Well, that'll be all for this evening, gentlemen. Same time next week. Home, McGregor. No need to polish apples. Oh, oh Mr. Fims, I've noticed your arthritis has been bothering you all night. How long can you keep it up? Work eight hours a day, sometimes five days a week at the warehouse, then five nights here. Until I can take and keep me and mine out of this jungle. It's not all that bad, Jock. These are good people. Insight. Stories of spiritual conflict in the 20th century. How do you do? My name is Father Kaiser. Today's story deals with an ugly subject. It isn't suitable for children because it cannot be understood by them. Yet it is of crucial concern to every adult. Its hero, Jock McGregor, is a man of wholesome ambition. He is determined that his wife and his family will not suffer the privations he has known. Such ambition is a good thing. To better oneself economically, to secure an education, to raise a family and live graciously, these are basic human rights, and McGregor is determined to exercise them. Woman, McGregor is home and wants his supper. Hi. Mm -hmm. Now that's dessert. <laughs> They'll be sitting a neighbor's brat again, I see. Good, good little brat. We're keeping her for the night. Did you ever see anything more beautiful? Well, there was this burlesque in Buffalo. Oh, McGregor, I mean it. <laughs> now, did you ever see anything more beautiful? Well, I've seen you. <laughs> oh. oh, no. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. If there's anything I can buy, it's a greeting bear. And, oh, yes. Oh, you're a lovely little thing. Oh, oh, oh. You'll be a lovely little lass. And one day a girl. And then a beautiful woman. Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you've got away with the ladies. Oh, don't I, though?
McGregor, would you like one of your own? Oh, I've got a lovely lady. One's enough. I'm talking about a baby, you big oaf. I don't want to breed animals to live in this jungle. Is that what you are, McGregor? An animal? Yes. I work like one, I sweat like one, sometimes I feel like one. And me, what does that make me? An animal too? Well, tell me, what am I? A stallion's mare? Teddy, I love you. I love children, you know that. Well, I was middle in a family of nine. But you get used to them. <laughs> and with my father dead and my mother and the others working, I practically raised the younger ones by myself. It's just... McGregor? <laughs> no, it's because of that. Sometimes there wasn't enough food on the table. Or shall I tell you about the hunger and the rats and the sickness and the shame? McGregor. My father should not have sired children into that kind of world. He should not have done that to my mother. And I'll not do that to you, Terry. McGregor, I'm going to have a baby. A bear? Yes, a bairn. Oh, a bairn! <laughs> Lay down, you big old. Oh, a bairn. That will grow up into a lovely little girl, and then a lass, and then a beautiful oh, woman. Who said anything about a girl? Oh, would you prefer a boy? Oh, <laughs> but Terry, you don't look like you're going to have a baby. A doctor says in seven and a half months. Hi. I'll get you something. How did it happen? What do you mean? How did it happen? I mean, how did it happen? I let it happen. Well, you knew how I felt. I couldn't make you understand how I felt. But I wanted time, time to change our lives. That I'm a married woman, not a tart, not uh, an animal. We are trapped now. You and I and our child will have to live the rest of our lives in this jungle. I couldn't keep forgetting that I'm a woman and I want children. It's a woman's nature. I want this baby. Then it was not an accident. No. You'll have to quit work. Not for a few months, but yes. And then? And I'll stay home and take care of our baby. Home. This is our home. I am told that babies are expensive. Doctor bills, food, clothing. I'll have to quit night school. Work more hours. I have three more years to graduate as it is. Oh, work more hours. Take me till forever to finish. And that's a bit too long. Maybe not. Maybe you can oh, still Oh, maybe be not my... Maybe not my you-know-what. I'm going to tell you something, Terry McGregor. And you listen to me. I know this is not something you've done all on your lonesome. I was there and I was probably yelling hallelujah. But we had an understanding. We had an understanding. No children. No children for three or four more years. That's five years of marriage. No children so that I could have the time to better myself. To become something. To become someone. I don't... I would have done something with a college degree. I'm a likeable man and not particularly stupid. I'd have made my way for you and for that child when it rightly came, and for myself. I'd have fought my way up out of this jungle. That was my right. That was my understanding and my right. And you changed that without asking me, without consulting me, without a buy your leave, Mr. McGregor. Well, you turned me into something more than an animal, but something less than a man. You turned me into a slave. You put me on the treadmill of having to strain my guts all my life. Hmm, all my life. Working just to feed me and mine, and nothing more to be hoped for. Not for you, not for me, not for that poor damn child you're carrying. We're not going out for a beer. There's nothing we can do about it now, so... McGregor. A bairn. Aye. It's a lovely word.
you have dark Scots blood in you, and it makes you look at the dark side of the world. I listen to you now, you listen to me. We'll manage. We'll have the baby. Don't touch me. I told you not to touch me. I want you to have an abortion. I will not. That would be murder. That is a superstition. It's a religious dogma, not my religion at that. And the laws have been twisted by that dogma. It is not murder to destroy a blob of jelly. It is the 20th century, not the Dark Ages. It's a perfectly legal and accepted practice in Japan, Sweden, Switzerland. I was talking to a man, an expert, a doctor. He says it's less trouble than having a tooth pulled. I want you to have an abortion. to have an abortion. You are my husband. Are you? Yes. know about my fee? Payment in advance. Yes. Let's get started. Sorry, it has to be in a place like this. I would be the same person doing the same thing, and you would be the same person doing the same thing. This was a fancy hospital in town. McGregor, I've been to a doctor. He told me he lost his license for doing a girl a favor who was in terrible need. What did the butcher do to you? He reached into me with his right hand. He caught my baby with a pair of forceps. He dragged it out of me and our baby was... Don't you know that's what would happen? That's what an abortion is.
Ah, was it McGregor? Himself. <laughs> Stoot. Well, I wouldn't say that exactly. More like a night out on the town. He's not disturbing anybody. Come on, Mac. We'll give you a hand on home. I want you to arrest me. Ah, come on now, man. Come on. I want you to arrest me. Well, I will now if you don't quiet down. He says he's a murderer. A murderer. <laughs> Heard some gossip tonight. His wife has had an abortion. Well, maybe I better get a car and take him down to the station. No. Don't have that poor guy. Let's take him on home. This place is like a morgue. I work like a horse all day, go to school at night and come home to this morgue. It's been three bloody weeks, Terry. How long are you going to keep punishing us? I'm sorry. Everybody forgives murderers nowadays. Adult murderers can be freed after seven years and teenage murderers can get off because they were too young to realize what they were doing. But we weren't too young to realize what we were doing. Surely three weeks is not too long a punishment for murder. <laughs> It was not a child, it was not a baby, it wasn't even a human being, Terry. It was a blob of jelly. It couldn't see, couldn't hear, couldn't think, couldn't feel. It was unborn. And if it had lived to be born, it wouldn't have been able to talk or walk or even control its bowels. Its face would have been mashed and funny looking like a monkey. But not funny looking to me. It wouldn't have had teeth to chew with. Only me to give it food and warmth. Would it have been human then, McGregor? When would it have become human? A minute after it was born? A month after it was born? A minute before? When? Stop it, Teddy. Isn't it possible maybe it had your eyes, and my hair, and your father's smile, and my mother's will to live, your will to learn? Maybe it had the seed of a personality, of character? Men have souls. Didn't it have a soul? Who's to say no? You, me? Politicians? Committee of doctors? Good night. What are you sewing? Mending my dress. Ah, it's a pretty dress. It's prettier on you. I know you like it. You bought it. The first thing you gave me is your wife. Ah, uh, the first. Not much in the way of seconds, thirds, and fourths, is there, Terry? I can't concentrate. 
I'll go inside. No, no, no. Stay here. I will put this aside. Well, I need to hear the sweet sound of your voice talking to me. About what? About what? Woman, are you made of stone that you can't see, feel, and hear the emptiness between us? Huh. We live, sleep, and eat in the same room, but it may just as well be you in China and me here. We're husband and wife still, Terry. Are we? Oh, that's a woman's answer. But not one worthy of Terry McGregor, are we? Say what you mean. McGregor, you know what I mean. You're a loving man. You know there's more dead in this house than just our baby. I love you, nonetheless. It's not you or me. It's us together. Our marriage is more than just two people. It's a husband, wife, and children. What else does a marriage mean? I love you. You love me. You know the reason for waiting. We've gone over it like water dripping on a stone till it's worn a hole in my brain. In my heart. That baby was both you and me so full of love for each other that enough spilled over and made another human being. It's dead. You still have McGregor. Part of him's gone. His child. Our child. Our bairn. The marriage of Terry and Jock McGregor has not been damaged beyond repair, but it has been dealt a serious blow. Why? Because Jock, in seeking to exercise his own rights, has violated the rights of his wife and unborn child. A woman has a right to children. No one, not even her husband, has a right deliberately to deprive her of the fulfillment which children bring. Like Jock, like Terry, like each of us, an unborn child has a right to life. God is the author of life. Only he has the right to withdraw it. The child is the natural overflow of marital love. He expresses the mutual love of husband and wife. He symbolizes their common unity. By preventing this overflow, Terry and Jock have jeopardized their mutual love one for the other. By frustrating this expression, they have deprived their marriage of one of its principal purposes. By destroying this symbol, they have ripped apart the fabric of their common life. Abortion violates the marital contract. It violates another human being's right to life. It violates God's plan.
Insight is a production of the Paulist Fathers, a group of Catholic priests who serve their God by serving those outside their church.